Physical Statistical Physics Seminar. I'm Thomas Gorin. Mm -hmm. I want to present you Dalia Hernandez. She's uh, she will give a talk on introduction to random magic theory. She's uh, doing her bachelor thesis with Soran Biswas on applications of random magic theory to uh, correlations in time series. So please, Dalia, start. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gori. Okay, um, yes, I want to talk about a um, short introduction about random matrix theory. This is abbreviated RMT. So let's start. Uh, what we will see today is a brief introduction about what is random matrix theory, the definition, and all these things, uh, unitarian orthogonal ensembles, Gaussian ensembles, and, and the box mirror method, which is a method to produce Gaussian entries. Distribution of eigenvalues of the Gaussian ensembles, Weiner surmise is a distribution, and number variance, which is a method to study fluctuations on the eigenvalues. Uh, okay, and the Wishart ensemble and correlations, the definition, time series, correlation matrices, created Wishart ensemble, Marchenko Pasteur, distribution, and unfolding. So, I, by to simplify this, I am not going in a historical order because Wishart start to work before then. Um, Weiner, who is who developed um, the Gaussian ensembles. So let's see. Um, a random matrix is a matrix whose entries are described by a certain joint probability density. So a joint probability density of in events talks about the probability that the n events occur simultaneously. So a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, but um, the meaning of what this matrix says, it have a lot to see with the application we are um, using the matrices. So for example, we can use a matrix in the case of, of networks. This is an example of three people playing um, football. So one person is sending the ball to another person, and this person to another person, and so on. But for example, if we want to give this information to a computer, we cannot do this with a, with a diagram. So we need to do this with a matrix. Another example is a picture. So each pixel is an entry of one matrix. Or another example where we use matrices, random matrices, is uh, Wagner discovered that the distance between energy levels of heavy nuclear atoms, as is the uranium, can be described by the Wagner surmise. Um, yes, we will talk here about the Wagner surmise. And another case is, for example, if the matrix is built with time series, um, a kind of matrix of equations which of systems which depends on many variables so okay um here are we to talk about matrices set of matrices a set of matrices is called ensemble um whose elements are random and are invariant on their transformation of the basis. So this kind of transformation, so the probability of the matrix of transformation by the ensemble we are studying, the matrix of the ensemble we are studying by the inverse is equal to the probability of the entries of the matrix we are studying, the matrix H. So uh, it's important when H is real and symmetric then the transformation matrix is real and not orthogonal. 
So, an orthogonal matrix is a real square matrix whose columns and rows are perpendicular and have unit magnitude. And also, the uh, property of these matrices is that the inverse is equal to the transport, transpose of tr this matrix. So, another case is when the entries of H are complex and the matrix is Hermitian. Then we ask to the matrix of transformation U to be complex and unitary. So, a matrix is unitary if its concrete transpose is also its inverse. And an Hermitian matrix is when the complex concrete transpose is equal to, to the same matrix. So, um, this beta talks about the number of real entries which have um, the ensembles. For example, a real symmetric matrix will have beta equal to one, one, one real number, and the complex Hermitian have beta equal to two. So these um, beta numbers are used when we usually when we are searching the distribution of this another um, important case that is when H have uh, the entries of H are quaternions, but I don't need to talk about this because these numbers are less usual. Then let's skip this. Now uh, we need to talk about the Gaussian ensembles, a uh, kind of random matrices. So the Gaussian matrices are symmetric and the entries are of uh, follow a Gaussian distribution. So this is a Gaussian distribution where mu is the mean and sigma is the variance, sigma squared then is the variance. Sigma is the standard deviation and sigma squared is the variance. So, for example, here we have a matrix. Then, if this is a um, Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, the um, entries on the diagonal will have, we follow an independent and identical distributed variables, and of a normal distribution with mean equal to zero and standard deviation equal to one. And the entries of the down of the diagonal and up, because it's a symmetric matrix, we follow an independent and identical distributed normal distribution uh, with zero mean and one and a half standard deviation. Okay, so what means independent and dedicatedly distributed? Random variables. This is a kind of variables which have other variables have the same probability, follow the same probability distribution and are independent uh, one of other. So the name says everything. And in the Gaussian unitary ensembles, which is the ensemble of complex entries, uh, well, the entries on the diagonal are real and the author's entries are complex. The elements on the diagonal follow on distributionally dependent and identical distributed numbers uh, with a normal distribution of zero mean and unit variance. So if the author's Entries are complex and follow also a normal distribution with zero and zero mean and one standard deviation. Sorry. What what do we mean when a random variable, a complex random variable, follow this kind of distribution? Then um, this means that the real part. Uh, and the y part, 
of the, the real part of the imaginary follow um, a distribution of normal distribution on mean zero and variance one and a half. So next, and the box Miller method is a method to generate pairs of independent random numbers with the standard normal distribution, C0 mean and unit variance. So here I brought an, a short develop of how we find uh, this Gaussian random variables. So first we start with the probability, joint probability function for two random variables. So we just multiply the probability of find one variable and another. After that, so we will say that the mean is equal to zero, the standard deviation is equal to one, and we change to polar coordinates. So we establish the function, this function, which depends of R and V. We solve this integral and got this expression. So now we say that the function of R and V is equal to the function of R by the function of V. And we separate then this expression in the function of phi and the function of r. So this is a random variable and we call this u1. This is another random variable and we call this u2. Then we search in in this, the, the value of R and of V, we get these terms and we put these terms on the variables X and Y in polar coordinates. Then we get the random variables, the Gaussian random variables we are searching. So with this, Variables we can build or Gaussian ensembles, Gaussian orthogonal ensemble. Now of the random matrices, we study the eigenvalues because we can see certain properties in them. So after this, I will talk about some of them. And well, the joint probability density for taking values of the Wishart ensembles, here is the orthogonal, the distribution of the orthogonal and of the unitary. And this is the, the function. Here, this is a constant of normalization. Vita is the, the Vita which I said before is beta equal to one to orthogonal and equal to two for unitary. And these are lambda means uh, Yeah, there is a question from the uh, participants. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Why is not a semicircle in the unitary case? Okay. Should be, I mean, the orthogonal looks like a semicircle, that's okay, but the unitary was. Right. I, I didn't think of this. Okay, ah, no, no problem. No. Okay, yeah. I, I am working mainly in which are ensembles, so just. Okay, no problem, no problem. Then next. Um, well, uh, now the, if we are studying the distribution uh, of the distance between one eigenvalue value and another, where, well, here I 
say that the space between eigenvalues is lambda 2 minus lambda 1, where lambda 2 is higher than lambda 1. So we will search this distribution. And the calculations are possible when we use one matrix of 2 by 2. Then, for example, this, where, yes, this have the properties of a Gaussian orthogonal ensemble. So first. We find the characteristic equation in this way, the trace of the matrix by lambda plus the determinant of x. And we make this equal to zero. We find the values of the eigenvalues. And then we find the space between these eigenvalues. After, after that, we find the probability of the space. So here we basically are multiplying the probability of each variable x1, x2, and x3 is this part. And we also add uh, this part, which talks about the space between eigenvalues. And if we solve this integral, we will get this. And the result is useful for higher dimension of the matrix for Gaussian orthogonal ensembles. So this is the distribution of the space. It's a Weiner surmise. So next. OK. And this is a, a way of study the fluctuations of the eigenvalues because we are studying the, the spaces between eigenvalues. So now we also can study in this way the fluctuations of eigenvalues. This is called number variance. And the number variance is the number of unfolded eigenvalues in the interval of length x. And it's a funny like this. And we can imagine that we are um, changing the bin size and studying how different are the instagrams of eigenvalues when we change the bin size. So, okay. Here, for example, I have uh, a rule where here I have one eigenvalue, here I have one eigenvalue, here I have another, and so on. So I will count how many eigenvalues, for example, I have if x is equal to 2. So here I have 2. If I, I will overlap the value of x, so each one of magnitude. These eigenvalues have more or less a magnitude of 1 because the average between a space of eigenvalues is one. So I will to overlap my X window, each one of magnitude. And again, count how many eigenvalues I have here and so on. So this number of eigenvalues inside this window is this number, and then I rest the magnitude of my window size, which usually is the average, which must be the average of all this, of all the, of these magnitudes of this vector. And after that, I find the Average over x i. So, yes, this is a, a useful method to study the fluctuations, and um, you can find another ensembles which have also the same properties than Gaussian ensembles if you search that the eigenvalues of the other ensembles have also. You need a space. You need 
um, yes, space between eigenvalues. Unit average space between eigenvalues. So now I will to talk about another kind of matrices, which is the Wishart ensemble. So to introduce this, to explain what is a Wishart ensemble, I need first to talk about correlations. So the, if we are searching, for example, um, you are a student to particles which are uh, uh, in position i and another is in position j so we want to find a probability to find in a simultaneous time the objects on a certain state depending on their positions so i get the two-point correlation function this is the two-point correlation function where phi is is the state so this is the these brackets are the average over time sigma is the standard deviation so this is uh, the correlation function next now if we for example make many measurements on the states of the particles how these states evolve in time. We can build with that measurements a time series if we order the measurements in time. So this is basically one time series. And we can build a matrix if we have n time series of length t, each one. So this is like a data matrix, a data matrix is uh, a matrix with real data. So the the kind of time series we study with these ensembles are time series which which depends on many variables and which have stationary time series. This means that the probability distribution does not change when it changes over time. And well, this is this is not always true. So don't don't see this part. <laughs> this is a special case. So a correlation matrix is a matrix which is what we this a matrix so the a matrix result from normalize the variance and subtracting the mean of each time series from the data matrix so m is the data matrix and a correlation matrix is a matrix that provides a correlation coefficient resulting from comparing all the time series of a data matrix so here we are comparing the first entry the time series one with the time series one, and here's the time series n with the time series one, and so on. So, C also can be defined in time on matrices as A by A transpose over T, where T is the length of the time series. So, next. And the Wishart matrices are defined by this equation with elements of I uh, as what white noise. So a white noise process is a random process with zero mean, constant variance, and no correlations. So now we to talk about the correlated Wishart ensemble. The correlated Wishart ensemble is made when we induce correlations to the Wishart ensemble. And any real correlation matrix can be written in terms of correlated Wishart ensemble because any real correlation matrix have correlations and noise. So if you want to study one, one system and maybe you can wish to induce correlations and see how your model 
seems like real data. So which are matrices are used usually to compare matrices of pure noise with matrices which have which are made of real data and then subtract the noise of the of the real data. You don't try to search uh, all the variables of the real data series, then you say that this is noise and and you subtract this. Um, well, here C and N is a matrix with one on the diagonals and the other's entries are constants. Um, but this this can be can be constants, but not all C's, not all the same constants. Only the diagonal need to be one because it's the correlation between the same entries with a, with the same time series. We can say. And the values of C are usually between zero and one. If C is equal to zero, the created Wisher ensemble is equal to the Wisher ensemble. So the distribution function of the Wisher ensemble uh, for T much more higher than N is Kalemar Chico Pasteur. And it is supposed that N and T tends to infinite, then we define a uh, constant k, which is t over n. And this is the distribution when lambda plus and lambda minus are the higher and lower eigenvalue, which depends on this and on the sizes of your matrix and on the variance. So this is an example of, of which are distribution. Well, if we want to study the fluctuations which we studied with the Gaussian orthogonal ensembles, we need to make that the Wishart ensemble have union mean level spacing, but also conserve the fluctuations of the eigenvalues. So for do that, I have a lot of troubles in my thesis, then I want to show the, the thing which I is commonly used but and showing internet but it's not doesn't work. So this is the the method which doesn't work. So first we build uh, the cumulative distribution of the eigenvalues um, where the probability distribution have frequency one. So this is a step function. And then we obtain a polynomial fit of this cumulative distribution. And then we say that the step function of each eigenvalue over the polynomial fit of such eigenvalue by the original eigenvalue by a constant is equal to our unfolding eigenvalue. So the explanation of this is that, well, for example, I have this plot. Here we have the polynomial fit, here the stack function. So we want to conserve the fluctuations and a way we can imagine this is to conserve the angle between the step function and the polynomial fit. So we say that the y-axis alt over the x-axis alt is equal to the tangent of this angle, and this is equal to the y-axis new over the x-axis new. So these two, we want to be equal because we want to conserve the angle. And we will say that our y-axis new 
is equal to this conserved angle by one x axis nu. So we can have the, the angles from from this direction, but we want to know which is this x nu. If we use the same, then the just the eigenvalues we will have the same answer ten before ten. We need to select this this x new and to do this we we go to the supposition that the average of the distance between eigenvalues is one. Then if we the average space of the eigenvalues, if we get this average at the end we will find that the higher eigenvalue of alta eigenvalues minus the eigenvalue more small smallest over n will be equal to one so in a similar way we search that or all the eigenvalues or original eigenvalues follow the same property but if we multiply by one constant, then this will be equal to our unfolded eigenvalues. These are unfolded eigenvalues. So from here we get this constant, and this will get, give us unit space eigenvalues in average and conserve the fluctuations. But when we do this division will lose some information of the fluctuations and the, the data is always below the universal form of the unfolded eigenvalues. So the last way in I, which I did this is just to again find the the step function with the rank on the y-axis and the eigenvalues in the x-axis of the obtain the polynomial fit and um, evaluate such polynomial on the eigenvalues again. And then these are my unfolded eigenvalues. So this is everything what I prepared for this talk. I don't know if you have questions. Okay, so <clears throat> are there any questions, please? Just write it to the chat. Or ask them directly. Maybe I have one question then. Uh, okay. Can you just wait for the sound to go off? Okay. I can switch off my microphone. Okay, maybe. Well, then, anyway, um, <clears throat> sometimes you know that. Uh, uh, level density or you expect that it is a semicircle law did you try eventually to use say instead of the polynomial fit just the semicircle to uh, unfold the eigenvalues but is it not no. the she does instead the ah, sorry yeah 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 Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, it should be Machenko Pasteur, yes. Yes, I right. tried with the um, with the long time series. Uh, and and was it the 
equivalent? Yes. Okay. And just a comment. I do not know if Thomas was asking that if we have used the analytical formation of the unfolding or not, right? That was the question, or you are asking that if uh, it is we check the long time series or not? No, the question was whether she used uh, the the analytically known level density for unfolding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. instead of the polynomial fit. Yeah. Can I answer? Yes. Please. Yeah, we didn't. OK, she didn't, at least in this case. Ah, OK. Because that answer for the Wishart ensemble, we know. And basically, in, instead of that, what we did is that to do the polynomial fitting for long time series in that limit to check everything is fine or not. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, and maybe another question. So, if you do the polynomial fit, you nevertheless you don't use all the eigenvalues, right? You have to limit the um, say analyze only the most central eigenvalues, or in another. Mm -hmm. saying differently to throw away those eigenvalues mm -hmm. which are at the border of the spectrum. How much, yes. how many did you throw away? Mm -hmm. Delia, yes, the problem was this, because if I could nothing, then with the of method, it matches with universal. But if I could 10%, uh, it doesn't match. Then I think it was um, well accepted because um, where they don't details, or I don't know. So how much you cut in both sides? That's what he's asking mostly. Before and ten, after. Ten percent of the wall of the total of eigenvalues. Okay. In both sides, ten and ten twenty. Yes, before and after and fourth. Before and after, so totally almost forty. Ah, okay. So you cut, so you throw away before and after the unfolding. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, are there any further questions? Yeah, yeah just one comment that if you really work on the purely Wishart ensemble, then you do not need to throw out that much mostly after the unfolding. But in case of correlated Wishart or in case of real data, what happens is that this age effect, effect have been uh, created or have been propagated by the process of unfolding also due to these correlations between the numbers. So the standard suggestions is you should throw out even after. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, yeah, further questions? Comments? Well, then, it's not the case. Thank you very much, Dahlia, for your talk. And uh, uh, how should we proceed? So, do we still discuss things uh, among us?